Hi, I'm Dr. Kate Master Serio Reynolds. My email's there, kate.reynolds. Um, I'm here to talk to you about uh, working with multilingual learners of English, people who are studying English while they're studying content or academics in the pre-K to 12. I'm a professor of teaching English to speakers of other languages and um, bilingual education. And my field of study, which I love, is about how people learn languages and how they learn both language and academic content simultaneously. So I want you to think to yourself if about whether you feel uh, prepared to work with English learners in your future classrooms. And do understand that English learners, English language learners, multilingual learners, and multilingual learners of English are all synonyms for people who speak other languages and who are learning English. CWU offers programs to prepare you to work with multilingual learners. We have undergraduate programs and we have post-bachelor's programs or a post-bachelor's endorsement. I'm going to talk to you today about the undergraduate minors teaching English language learners or TEL. It's also known as TEFL, which is an add-on license to an initial licensure area in pre-K or elementary or history or ELA, or music, or art, or social studies. Um, bilingual education dual language minor is another add-on license, but you have to be a bilingual yourself. With the first one, you don't have to be a bilingual. The second one, you really need to be a bilingual because you're going to be teaching in two languages. It also prepares you to work with learners, but you're, work you're teaching maybe science in Spanish and English, or in Vietnamese and English. We also have a post-bachelor's program, and this is a program for people who have already graduated and who are already teaching, or people who are about to, to graduate and they're going to go into teaching. So, oh, I didn't have time in my undergraduate degree to um, add on a minor. This is something you might want to do online afterward. 11.8% of all students in Washington State are multilingual learners of English. And you can see in the chart there, 12.9% there are, uh, are in kindergarten. But the numbers, I mean, grade 3, 14.4%, a grade 8, 8.1. And it, the learners, um, we have learners all the way up until grade 12, because multilingual learners of English can enter our schools at any time. They could be refugees, they could be immigrants, they could be migrants, they could um, you know, have a variety of different reasons, exchange students, um, that brings them to the United States at any grade level. And they might be learning English starting with the basics of English at, say, ninth grade. This chart shows the number of English learners in different school districts in Washington State. And if you look, some of the top ones are Pasco, Yakima, uh, Highline, uh, let me look down the list, Sunnyside, but Seattle, of course, Kent, uh, Federal Way, that's, um, Malkatillo, many other school districts have really high numbers of learners. If you see your school district or the one you hope to work at um, on this list, you might want to get prepared in advance. If you don't see your school on the list, that doesn't mean that you still won't see multilingual learners of English. You'll still have them in your, in your classes. They just aren't the top. Now, for teachers, one of the big um, responsibilities these days is to make sure that our students are learning. And so we have the smarter balance tests that the students have to take every year. Multilingual learners of English also have to take these types of tests. And um, they, well, after their first nine months, <laughs> they have to take smarter balance. And the teachers need to show that the students are meeting academic standards and language standards. So how do multilingual learners of English perform on standards in Washington State? 
according to OSP High, and by the way, all the data in this um, in this presentation are f from OSPI. Um, multilingual learners who meet the standards at grade three are 29.3%, but by grade five, only 12.2%, grade seven, 9.6%, and then grade 12, less than 5%. What this shows us is that multilingual learners of English need support all throughout the K-12, to not just in elementary. So being prepared to work with them will really help them and help you as an educator. So if you have an initial license in any of the teacher education areas that we offer at Central, you see the list there. You can add on a bilingual education minor, if you're bilingual, or a teaching English language learner minor or TESOL minor, if you're an English speaker only. Um, and you can, you're going to see some information in a minute on how you can add a minor or you can email me. By the way, you can combine any of the areas together, which is beautiful. I, I personally like history and ELL work. So um, if you were to combine, say, early childhood and bilingual education or TEL, you can see that there are 12.9% of kindergartners who are multilingual learners of English, but you can help them develop their first language literacy. You can help them facilitate learning in um, the oral language skills of the second language. You can help them build first and second language vocabulary. All of these skills will set them up for success in later elementary school. If you were to combine special education with a minor in bilingual or TEL, you're going to help a lot of students who already might struggle with language-related difficulties. Uh, multilingual learners of English with disabilities make up about 14% of the ELL population, according to the Council of Exceptional Children. And we can help support them by identifying the, different, um, the differences between disability and culture, disability and linguistic differences, or second language learning. And we can help people who have dyslexia learn to speak or write or listen or read um, and by understanding the second language acquisition processes, right? So we know where they are, we know what they need to learn and how they will learn it. And we're not just focusing on dys uh, dyslexia. Same thing goes with dysgraphia and other exceptionalities. So you can see that um, with these fields, they complement many, many different initial licenses. The bilingual um, education minor, it's a dual language minor, it's brand new this year, um, allows you to teach your uh, any subject in two languages. And you can work pre-K to 12. Um, more and more, um, the state OSPI offices are promoting dual language, and they said 52, uh, Chris Reichel, Reichdahl the other day, who is superintendent of OSPI, said 52 different school districts now offer dual language instruction in the elementary schools, and they're trying to really promote this. So you can work with English speakers who are learning the um, Spanish or Vietnamese, and the Vietnamese students who are learning English in your science classroom or your social studies classroom or your... Um, I don't know it, um, your CTE class. Uh, bilingual and TEL or TESOL will get you your job in the district you want fast because they're in the top three highest demand areas in the state. Both of them allow for more autonomy and creativity and lesson planning and curriculum design. They let you have smaller classes and they, um, motive, the students are more motivated in those classes. If you want more information about the bilingual minor, you can follow the QR code at the top. If you would just like to go ahead and declare the minor, you can follow the QR code at the bottom. So in terms of English language learning, um, the TEL program or the TESOL program, 
um, it allows you to be exposed to many, many new cultures. And this is one of the things I love about it. You get to work with diverse learners and different ages of learners all the time. So you could have a class with 16 different languages and cultures in one class. So you're constantly learning. There's constantly interesting information coming in. Um, again, you get your choice of school district. You'll get a good job fast. You have opportunities to learn and travel a lot if you have this minor. And like the um, like bilingual ed, more autonomy, creativity, smaller class sizes, increased learner motivation. So the top QR code is information about the TEL minor. And if you want to just go ahead and declare it, that's a link at the bottom with that QR code. So thank you for your attention. I really appreciate it. My name is Dr. Kate Reynolds. You can text or email me, not text me, at kate.reynolds at cw.edu. And I really do hope to hear from you. Thank you so much. Take care.